if I'd like to first start by um, sending my thoughts and, and prayers to a, a lot of people uh, down in South Louisiana uh, that were affected by uh, Hurricane Ida over this past uh, weekend. Um, my wife's uh, from down there, uh, a lot of close family friends who have lost everything and, and are starting over. Um, heart pours out to them. You know, I got to spend a little bit of time down in that region when I was coaching at Nickel State and uh, just so many great people um, that I got to meet and uh, reached out to all of them. Everybody's safe, but just a lot of rebuilding that's going to have to take place, you know, for a long period of time. Um, Tough couple days here for us. It's always that, that way as you transition from um, training camp preseason uh, over into the regular season, you know, making the roster cuts. But um, still got some work to do as some, as some players that will come off of the COVID IR. Um, but we're, we're, we're at where we're at and excited to watch these guys um, compete this fall. With that, I will take some questions. Did you feel like there's the some mower here in the background? Did you feel like the, the players on the COVID list maybe give you a little bit of an advantage that you can sort of be patient with some guys? And, and yeah, maybe... I don't know that there's really any, any advantage to, to, the, to the COVID list. It's, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's, the, it's the way it's the structure that, it, that it's set up. But, um, you know, we, we, like I said, we've still got some work to do here over the next couple, um, next couple of days as guys start to come off of that. You've got to make corresponding moves. We're still working through that, talking through that. Um, you know, but it was a really, really competitive camp, and um, you know, we'll continue to work through that. Obviously, the big move out of your release is Fitzpatrick. Fourth round pick, you moved up to get him. What went wrong? How, how did it get to him not you know, being on the roster at this point? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that anything went wrong, T. It's, you know, some players, um, it, it takes some longer to transition um, to, to the pro game. You know, we, we've seen that before. Um, with with a lot of our guys, you know, Jeremy McNichols was a was a draft pick, and you know he's bounced around with several teams and been on practice squads, has been on our practice squad, and you know, he kind of carved out a nice little role for himself here now. Um, Tier Tart, Derek Roberson, Logan Woods. I mean, there's a there's a lot of guys that you know have started there, um, have continued to work and 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 build and and try to improve their skill set, uh, which is what we expect to Des. And you know, I, I challenged him to. Um, come in every single day, work to be, work to be better. Um, he knows what the expectation level is. Um, I know the capabilities that he's capable of, um, and, and the only the only one that can change that is him. You know, um, so we're excited to keep working with him on the practice squad. Specifically, John, has he, where specifically did he come up short relative to what you thought you were getting? In him? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of areas. You know, it's um, he's 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 diligent. He's a hard worker. He's he's a great guy. Um, you know, it's just there, there's there's so much. It's a new playbook. Knowing knowing where you know where to line up. How, how do I execute this? Where do I fit on this run blocking scheme? How am I supposed to run this route? There's a lot of details. Um, he's got the skill set. It's the it's the details and the improvement. You know, they just got to continue to focus on day in and day out. With uh, with the backup quarterback situation, you guys waived Matt Barkley today. What what stands out about Logan Woodside, and and how has he been able to maintain his hold on this job? Yeah, uh, you know, it was a really close battle when we made the move early in camp with uh, Deshaun Kaiser, uh, and then brought Matt in. Um, you know, I thought it made the position extremely competitive. You know, I thought both of them. Um, battled every single day here in in camp um, and, and in the preseason games. I thought Logan, you know, played well in in the first one. I thought Matt played really well in the second one, and and I thought Logan kind of took the reins there in the, in the third one. They're both extremely diligent. Um, they're both going to ha- uh, help us uh, this season. Uh, Matt Barkley is signing back to our practice squad. Uh, hashtag breaking. Um, so um, excited to keep working with those guys. It's good to have a veteran guy like Matt here, um, you know, working with us. And you know, he and I talked. And you never know when that opportunity is going to come. You know, to to be up on the active roster, to to play in the game. You know, this is a you know, it's a long season. It's a tough game, and um, I know he'll prepare um, to be up every single day. Plan to use Barkley like as a quarantine guy. Will you keep him separate from the team? We'll talk through all that, Dave. Yeah, well, we're still working through kind of how we're gonna how we're gonna set that structurally up. Um, but excited to you know excited to have him back. 
um, and, and continue to work with them. Pretty How high group. decisions change with the, with the vaccination? You know, last year you had the long onboarding process for a new guy. This year, if they're vax, you don't have to go through all that. Say that again, Lou, sorry. With, with the, the, the vax, does that change anything, whereas you don't have the onboarding process that you would have had with guys last year? What changes the onboarding process? Yeah, I mean, if, if they're they're vaccinated and they meet, you know, they fall under the you know the, the testing and whatever, they can they can enter straight away. You don't have to you know to quarantine them and and, and wait. So, um, you know, whatever that testing cadence is and that on, onboarding process is, that's what we'll follow. I don't want to say short term IR today. Speak to your health, or does it speak to the? freedom you have with the roster right now given the COVID spread. probably the latter um paul uh, probably the latter well you know we're kind of still working through like i said earlier some of the roster things um about how we're going to treat some of those guys how long you know those you know some of these bumps and bruises are going to take uh i think the rule that passed that the return you know to, to play the short-term ir is beneficial uh, for all clubs uh, so that you have access to all your players from a Makai Sargent to earn himself a spot on the initial 53, and, and how much did injuries and, and, and maybe Jeremy going on the, on the COVID list kind of complicate uh, that position for you? Um, I saw a guy who, who we handed when we handed him the ball. Um, he was decisive as a runner. Um, he hit the hole. He tried to run through contact when somebody tried to tackle him. Um, if we scored a touchdown, and he was in there. He went and lined up on the kickoff team, ran through whoever, whoever was trying to block him and tried to smoke the guy with a ball. So I think when you have that approach um, to your position, to the game of football, um, it certainly made my decision and Mike's decision a lot easier uh, to keep a guy like that around. So Pretty big. Have a lot of defensive backs on the initial roster, 13. Um, a lot of them are, are safeties. Just kind of what went into that decision to you know, keeping so many those guys at that position. Yeah, I mean, I think again, the the, the roster is in, in in flux, but I mean, all those guys earned the right to be here. They all have different different roles. Um, you know, some of them are more special teams. Some of them are more are more defensive players. Um, you know, but we're still we're still we're still looking at the roster as a whole and trying to decide numerically how many we need to keep at this position or that position. Um, you know, in, in anticipation for how we're going to attack the fall. With respect to guys that are going to come off, you know, COVID here at some point. You guys haven't always had a, a real big depth at wide receiver. How difficult was this year's group uh, to make those decisions? A lot of arguments for a lot of guys, I guess. Huh? Yeah, it's it, it was it was a um, it was not a it was not a fun um, thing to work through, but it was it was something that uh, I'm proud that we had to work through that and trying to make some hard decisions. Um, you know, I'm excited that Mason Kenzie's back. I mean, I thought he had a heck of a preseason, and uh, he's grateful for the opportunity. Um, but but all of those guys, you know, it's um, you know we're for, we were fortunate to have some depth there at that position, and you know we're we're going to need guys at some point. You know, it's like I said, it's the same thing with the, when we're talking about the quarterback position. You're going to need guys to step up at some point, and you know, fortunately fortunately for us, we've got some depth there and can lean on those guys. Give us a, a, any idea in, in terms of how long. You know, Marcus Johnson and Josh Reynolds will be before they're up to kind of 100% anyway. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, met with Todd yet. You know, we had some uh, the those guys in today still working through, you know, treatment plans and, and anticipation of when they're going to be out, you know, be back out here. Um, you know, but, but both of those guys have, have certainly, you know, had really good camps and excited to work with them. How valuable is it for, for Levin to come in here? He's got some experience. Here, but he can just kind of just slide right in and, and pick up where he left off when he left. Well, it saved us a flight, that's for sure. Because when I called him and asked him, like, how do we need it? Were you in New York? Would he get you down there? He said, No, I'm in Nashville. I was like, Okay, well, we'll just just you know gas up the tank and drive over. Um, but no, he's uh, you know he he knows the system. Obviously, we drafted him here. Um, he'd been on the roster a little bit, and um, when I went back and watched through the preseason games, he was a guy that that played both guard spots. He played center. Uh, he played a lot of snaps. Uh, I thought they were really, really competitive snaps uh, when he was in there. You know, he stylistically he he plays um, the way we play, and um, you know, from a scheme standpoint, he knows the scheme. He knows Keith, um, and uh, it was good to get him back. You know, to provide some depth in there for us. John, the Falcons owner said yesterday that. Julio Jones not practicing over 
years was kind of a sticking point with the coaches in front office there. Are you concerned at all about that long term with him here? No, I mean, I know he, he prepares every single day. Uh, he's in here early. He's working to, to, um, to make sure he's ready to go. Um, did some stuff yesterday, you know, and we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes the rest of the week. And um, I'm excited to watch him out there on Sundays. One decision, it looks like you guys maybe went with kind of an upside and potential with Roberson over a vet like Simon. Is that accurate? Is that basically what it come down to? Or Yeah, you know, I thought that um, – I thought that, you know, Roby has uh, – he was kind of up and down last year uh, for us. Uh, but I thought he really did an outstanding job of, uh, in the offseason, um, dedicating himself to, to improving. It certainly showed in practices, uh, showed up in the games. Um, I thought he was executing the games and the stunts and some of the stuff that we ran technique-wise, what we asked of him um, much better, um, and thought that, that, that he earned the spot. Thought he earned the spot. For Tier Tark last year at this time, like he was one of the guys probably like sweating about making the roster. Now here, here he is, a, a possible starter. Uh, great off season for for Tier. Um, you know, continues to to work on consistency. Um, he's a big, strong man um, that has length, that has power to create knockback at the point of attack. Um, and you know, he's got some he's got some power to push the pocket on 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 the pass. Uh, as a rusher in there, um, really did a great, great job of dedicating himself. Uh, I'd say much like Roby in the off-season program to changing his body. I told him, you know, I, I poked him in the shoulder and I said, "You've got bumps where you're supposed to have bumps now. I'm not hitting bone. I'm hitting meat." Um, so uh, he did a really good job of working out and and changing his body. You know, getting it ready for the NFL season. It started to become clear that Daquan Jones wouldn't be back. Um, is there ever a conversation? Where he came to you, like I know this is an opportunity. What what do I need to do or anything along those lines? Yeah, I think these guys kind of see that. You know, he, he's got a great relationship with uh, with uh, Big T, uh, Coach Williams, our D line coach, and you know, T's pretty pretty frank with those guys. He's pretty upfront and honest with what the expectation level is. And I know Tier took that to heart. He's got a great relationship with him, and you know, challenged him. You know, challenged him to step his game up because we all saw the ability. Uh, it was about Tier dedicating himself, which he has, and I'm proud of him. Um, it was another one that I think was on the practice squad, or you know, he was cut last year. He kind of bounced around for us, um, and now he's you know going to play a lot of meaningful snaps for us. Well, Warren told us lately about the drastic difference in culture from when he got here to what you guys have now. If, if you were kind of to classify what you and Mike have been able to do in that department, how would you? Yeah, I mean, I think we it's it's uh, we we treat these guys. Um, you know, the way that they treat the team and they respect the team and we respect them. Um, we work hard. We push each other. Um, the players push each other. They enjoy coming to work every single day. Um, and, and you can have honest and frank conversations. We hold each other accountable. Um, and it's, it's, it's fun, you know. And you, it, we've got a bunch of good guys in there that, that are about the team. They're about working hard. They're about committing themselves to um, – you know, a, a team effort, and um, they enjoy coming to practice. I mean, that was one of the things that Makai said after the uh, Falcons game. He put his arm around me. He's like, "I can't. Can we practice tomorrow? I'm ready to go." I'm like, Makai, we get you got to get a day off, buddy. This ain't Iowa. I don't know what Kirk was doing, but um, that's that's the type of uh, of guys that we have in the locker room. Guys that love ball and, and want to come to work every single day and, and commit themselves to helping their teammates win. How much did it do for your peace of mind and maybe everybody's in the building to, to make the decision at kicker relatively early the way you did? Yeah, I think Sam did it. You know, he's done a great job. You know, it's, uh, he's, he's kicked before um, in, the, in the league. So to, to be able to add him and, and him come to a new evir- environment, um, assimilate himself to the way we do things, um, formed a great bond with, with Brett and Morgan, um, the timing and the snap, because all that stuff is, is important. And where does he want the ball placed? How does he want it tilted? All of that stuff plays into you know the the kicker, um, and he's done a great job. They got on the same page quickly. Um, he's been really good for us, and uh, I'm excited to see him kick it through those yellow things this fall. Why is it Dylan hasn't been able Hopefully to get? Hopefully, they're PATs. 
Sorry. You surprised Dylan hasn't been able to get in the mix at right tackling at this point. Where do you see his future? Yeah, he's another. I mean, he's a guy that um, you know it's it's a smaller school at North Dakota State. I think they won forty eight national championships in a row or something like that. Um, but you know they they didn't play last year and uh, he played one game and then he played in the Senior Bowl. So um, he kind of missed a year of football a little bit. He's gotten better. Um, he's gotten better with his hands. Um, he's got to learn to continue to use his length um, and lean on his technique. You know, that's the big thing with offensive line play. It's about the technique that Keith and Sully, um, that those guys work day in and day out. When you get yourself into, I would say, a precarious position as an offensive lineman, the defensive linemen in this league aren't the ones that you played against in college. And you, you can't get away with just m trying to manhandle or maul somebody because you're bigger and stronger than them. Th these guys that you're going against are the same size and bigger, if not stronger, than you are. So you've got you've to focus on that technique. And, you know, for offensive line play, that's um, – we teach things a certain way, and it's it's learning a new skill set. You know, it's it's. I don't know how to write calligraphy, but I would imagine it would be like you know you're writing in cursive, and then you got to try to write calligraphy, and it's it, it's different. Um, there's some things that are similar, um, but he's focusing on those details, those technique things. He's getting better every single day. He stays out here after practice and works uh, on his you know his stances and his punches and and all that stuff. So um, I'm excited about the upside of it. Do you, do you think he's a tackle ultimately long term, and do you think like this year he's a reserve interior I, I guy? I think the, the cool thing about him is that he can play several spots. I, you know, I think he can play uh, guard and he can play tackle. There's some players that when we evaluate him, and that's one of the things we said in the evaluation is um, he's a he's a player who can play a couple of different positions, um, and that's valuable in the NFL. Um, sometimes they're only a guard or they're only a tackle, and. You know, it's kind of hard. It's hard for those guys to stick if they're not the top backup or the starter. So his versatility is um, it's certainly going to pay off for him and for us. Caleb, in terms of readiness, I don't remember. I mean, you guys talked about the back, but I don't remember you talking about knocking the rust off and, and him not playing last year and not being at the position for a long time. I, yeah, I think Paul. He's he he's another one that's steadily gotten better. He broke up a pass yesterday in practice. Um, it's his is technique too. It's understanding leverage. It's understanding where your help at. Help is if you've got safety help, or you know if you've got if you've got people inside of you, you can you can push those those routes in there to your inside help coverage wise and kind of peel off. Um, learning those things, learning the techniques that we teach. Um, he, he's steadily gotten better. Uh, in my eyes, from a movement standpoint, from a technique standpoint, practice after practice. After an off season where you had the reduced salary cap, all that, how, how confident are you that the roster you put together now is is improved from the team that lost to Baltimore? Um, I mean, I think everybody's optimistic. I mean, there's 32 teams that are optimistic that they're gonna um, that that they're gonna go. You know, where where everybody wants to go. We all we're all you know ultimately going for the same goal. I think, but. Our short-term goal is to get ready for Arizona, and we're going to take it week by week. That's what we believe in. You know, when you start looking too far ahead um, at the ultimate goal, you know, there's some things along the way, some hurdles along the way that can trip you up. Um, so we're, I mean, it's it's a week-to-week -week league. Um, that's how we've always approached it: is focusing on our opponent, which, you know, right now it's Arizona. Get ready for those guys and trying to start the season off right. Snuck one in there, Jim. Yeah, I'm one more. How good to get Mike back, and you feel like you and him and maybe the staff made the, the best of what was a, a tough situation? We tried. I'm tired of blowing the whistle, Jim. But it's, uh, it's good to have him back. I mean, he's such, a, he's such a great leader on the practice field. The players respect him. He's got a wealth of knowledge about the game of football in all three phases. Um, he's a teacher. Um, he's in, he, he works to inspire guys to go out every single day and, and improve. Uh, so, so to have him back leading the football team, um, uh, uh, he had a, he had a grin on his face this morning as he was he was parking his truck and walking in.